Good morning, Sec 3 History students. I'm Mr. Xiao, and today I'm going to teach a lesson on the skill of reliability uh, that you will need to use in source-based case studies. Before I begin, you should have this worksheet on reliability with you, and at any point, you may speed up, slow down, or pause this video to suit your learning pace. So let's begin. Reliability is a skill that asks you whether or not you trust what a, say, a source says about a topic. So in the most fundamental and basic understanding of reliability, if you trust what the source says, it's reliable. And if you don't trust what a source says, it's unreliable. So suppose you see an advertisement online and the advertisement says there's a discount for, um, for ice cream. At, at the local NTUC fair price supermarket. So if you think that the advertisement is telling the truth, it's reliable. Uh, suppose you see uh, another advertisement the next day and it says um, earn $20,000 by clicking on this link and you'll become rich in an instant. And you don't trust what it says. So you think it's unreliable. That's what the skill is about. How do we know when? these advertisements, these sources, how do we know when they're telling the truth? So in order to figure out when sources are telling the truth, we first need to do a content inference. What is the source saying? Um, and then, is what the source saying true? So we establish what the source is saying, and then we make a cross-reference to check if what the source is saying is true. A cross-reference is taking a content inference from a source and checking it against another source or against your own knowledge. The final step or the highest level of any reliability question is to check the provenance of a source. So um, going back to the quick examples I gave, if you saw the NTUC FairPrice advertisement about the discount for ice cream, uh, you might think it's reliable because firstly, the, the advertisement's objective purpose is to get more sales. So telling you about a discount is in line with its objective and therefore you believe that there is probably, probably a discount. And furthermore, if there's nothing in it for NTUC to lie about these, these discounts because it would just make people distrust the the supermarket chain and not buy from them. So in other words, there's a reason for NTUC to want to be truthful when they're having discounts. Uh, so you really believe them based on their purpose, which is to spread adver advertisement to gain more sales and to maintain a certain reputation among customers. Conversely, when we talked about the quick example about get rich immediately, $20,000 by clicking on a website link, uh, <laughs> that might be a scam. <laughs> That might be um the source might be trying to um cheat people of their money instead. So so you think that there's a purpose um for saying those things? It's there's an agenda. It's unreliable. So in the context of historical sources, uh, some quick and dirty rules of thumb. When you look at um political leader speeches, you tend to be a bit more wary because political leaders, politicians, they tend to have certain agendas to advance their own objectives and therefore they will say things in order to make people do what the politicians want and therefore you might not really take what they say at face value. Conversely, conversely, when it's a historian and historians have no such, have very little sort of agendas to advance their own objectives, but they just want to seek the truth, then you tend to believe them. Um, the reliability question can be phrased as, is, is source A reliable? Can you trust? Do you believe what source B says? Is source C credible? So these questions are very typical. Notice that some reliability questions have a focus, right? So sometimes there is a question focus. Uh, when the reliability question has a question focus, it, you start off by making inferences about the focus. What does source B say about the topic? And then you check whether it's true. If the question has no focus, as in this question, is source A reliable? 
If there's no focus, then you establish the message of the source. What does source A say in general? You could also use the anchor topic or question of the source-based case study to help you establish the message of the source. Very broadly, um, a source is reliable when it is supported by your contextual knowledge or another source and has no hidden agenda or purpose. Or it, um, the last type is a bit trickier. Um, a source has reliability, is trustworthy, if what it says goes against its expected purpose. You need to sit and think about this for a while. I'll give you an example to make this a bit more concrete. Um, suppose, suppose it it is um. Let's say it's in Nazi Germany, and the Nazi you see a Nazi party member, a Nazi party member who is criticizing Adolf Hitler. Right, you would be very surprised that the Nazi party member is criticizing Adolf Hitler. Because you would expect that the Nazi party member would be cheering and praising Adolf Hitler because the Nazi party member is part of the Nazi party and Hitler is the Nazi party leader. And so if you were to come across a source where a Nazi party member is criticizing Adolf Hitler, and there are such Nazi party leaders, very rare. I think Gregor Strasser in 1932 was read this enchanted with Hitler at one point. So suppose you came across a speech, a memoir about this Nazi party member who was criticizing Hitler. Going against their purpose, expected purpose, you would think they want to praise Hitler so that they can get more support for Nazi party. Then you think this source is extra reliable. Because instead of trying to say something to achieve an agenda, they are saying the opposite of what they want, you expect them to want to do. Um, yeah, sit and think about that for a while. Um, the converse, unreliable, cannot be trusted. If a reliable source is supported by a contextual knowledge, an unreliable source is contradicted by my contextual knowledge or another source. Please write this down in your worksheet. If a reliable source has no hidden agenda or purpose, an unreliable source has a hidden agenda or purpose based on the context of the time. And the source is, is meant to achieve the purpose. Right? The source is trying to achieve the purpose. There is a reason why um, the source giver gave this source. So you can see the agenda, you see what they're trying to do in this source. The most common example is a speech in an election cycle. Um, all the politicians are saying how great they are because they want to win the election. These sort of sources, what they say, you have to be a bit more wary, take with a pinch of salt because they have an agenda. Okay, so let's write this down in our worksheet and then let's proceed. So the case study I want to look at is the 1938 Czech crisis. Um, this, you know, is part of... Um, both Hitler's expansionist policy as well as the Allies' policy of appeasement in the road to World War II. So we know that 1930s was, was the, the low point. It was what my professor Marcy Shaw used to say, um, uh, Europe enters a minor key. If the 1920s was a period of bright sort of international cooperation, the heyday of internationalism and um, the idea that countries could maintain peace. Uh, the 1930s, in particular with the Great Depression, um, sounded the death knell on that sort of vibrant period of cooperation and positivity. So many serious international crises erupted. And in Europe in particular, in the West, you have the Spanish Civil War. In the East, you have a series of expansionist actions. Uh, we have... We call the Rhineland, the Rhineland occupation. Then you have Anschluss with Austria. And directly after Anschluss with Austria, you have the Czech crisis. What is the Czech crisis? So first of all, Germany re reunites with Austria through Anschluss. You, you have a sort of mental picture of, of Europe in your head. Um, 
To the east of Germany, the southeast is Austria, north of Austria is Czechoslovakia, and north of Czechoslovakia is Poland. So Hitler is sort of taking this step by step, going going northwards. Um, so Austria reunites with with Greater Germany, Gross Deutschland, and and afterwards Hitler casts his gaze on on the Sudetenland in Czechoslovakia, which is majority German speaking. Um, he claims that the Germans then need to be under his protection. The Czechoslovak government disagrees. Of course, because the Sudetenland, as we have said in lesson, was critical to Czechoslovakia's military defense for two reasons. One was the mountainous area of the Sudetenland, which was a natural barrier protecting Czechoslovakia from Germany. Indeed, this was the reason that the peacemakers at Purdy in 1919 had decided to make this the border, because it was defensible based on the mountains. The other reason is that the the munitions factories, the armaments factories, the weapon factories, they are the Skoda armaments, they are all loca located in the Sudetenland. So um, by surrendering the Sudetenland, Germany would be greatly empowered and Czechoslovakia would become very vulnerable. And of course, Czech said, no, we don't want to surrender Sudetenland. A war seemed imminent and eventually Britain, France and Italy joined Germany in the Munich conference and they forced Czechoslovakia to surrender the Sudetenland. Primarily, you can think of this as a key example of appeasement. And you might be wondering, you know, why, why would France and Britain even, even care? Because, because isn't it great that Germany fights Czechoslovakia? Then, then France and Britain just sit back and watch the show, right? Um, well, Czechoslovakia had a, had a security treaty with France. The idea was that if Germany attacked Czechoslovakia, France would have to join the war. And if France joined the war, France would expect Britain to join the war. So in other words, this could have triggered a world war at the point. And, and Britain and France weren't very keen on the world war. Okay, so that's the Czech crisis in a nutshell. The, the crisis is Germany says we want the Sudetenland. The Czechs say no. And then war could have broken out. And if war broke out, it seemed like France and Britain would be sucked in. So let's look at source A. Oh, at any point, by the way, again, pause, slow down if you need to look at the sources or read the background information in more detail because I am um, moving at a rapid pace. So in source A, uh, this is a cartoon in a British newspaper. The man is Neville Chamberlain. Uh, Chamberlain is the British Prime Minister. He is one of the key figures in the appeasement of Germany. Appeasement, remember, um, the strategy whereby you try to give Germany what it wants so that it doesn't it doesn't start a war. So let's sort of look at the details of this cartoon. Neville Chamberlain is pushing this globe, probably representing the world, right? On this very precarious wooden plank or bridge, it's breaking. It's labeled the Czech crisis. So already you get a sense that the um the idea is that Britain is saving the world, saving the world um even though it's in danger of being on the bridge that's being broken. And if we're, the bridge were to break, you can see the wall fall straight into the jagged, jagged rocks labeled war. So Britain is trying to sort of steer the world away from war, out of the danger of the Czech crisis towards this, this peace, this cliff that says peace. Um, the message is quite clear. Britain is aiming for world peace. It, uh, Britain is trying its best to maintain world peace in the face of the Czech crisis. Um, credits to Britain. So let's read the question. Study source A. Can you trust what this cartoon says about Britain's efforts to maintain peace in Europe? The word trust is a command word. The moment you see the word trust, you know it's a reliability question. And your answer to the question, your ATQ, has to have the word trust. You have to reuse the command word. Can you trust? The answers would be I can trust, I cannot trust. What the cartoon says about Britain's efforts to maintain peace in Europe, this is the question focus. So since this is a question with a question focus, we need to establish the inference, the inference. Which means that there would be two possible inferences, right? You could say that Britain has made good efforts, effective efforts, great efforts, positive efforts to maintain peace. You could also say the opposite. Britain has made no, no effort, poor effort, ineffective effort to maintain peace. And if we were to look at the cartoon, this cartoon's tone, attitude towards Britain is really quite positive. It, it is praising, in a way, Britain for being the, the adult here that is steering the world to peace. 
So I we imagine the inference on the cartoon is that it's a Britain's making great efforts, great efforts to maintain peace. So when we as when we write our answer, we, we can we can start to answer the question. Um whether you can or cannot trust, you have to decide later based on your your strategy, support or contradict by contextual knowledge. No hidden agenda has hidden agenda. This is how you decide can or cannot trust. I'll show you that later. So let's go through with a can trust strategy. I can trust the cartoon because it's reasonable in telling me that Britain made great efforts to maintain peace. This is because Britain's leader tried to prevent the world from falling to war and instead guide the world towards peace. And I can see it from the cartoon, which shows Neville Chamberlain rolling the globe over the breaking wooden bridge, where, where, where if it were to fall, it would fall into war. So when we talk about trusting the cartoon, right, we say that the cartoon must be supported by our contextual knowledge. So here, clearly, we, we have to do a support stand. So how do we know that, that, that Britain is making great efforts to maintain peace? What do we know from our own knowledge? Um, actually, we know quite a bit because we, we just discussed the background information. We know that Britain and France had a policy of appeasement. So, So I would put out my knowledge. The policy of appeasement meant that Britain and France were making sacrifices, right? They were trying to understand and support Germany. They wanted uh, Germany to have no reason, no, no, um, in the, you could think of it, you could use this term, Kaiser's belly. I don't know if you have seen this term. Um, so... So anyway, this is just a term that says no reason to start a war. So if you if you looked at the cartoon and you immediately agreed with the inference because of what you know, you would go for a can trust position. Can trust because I know that Britain and France um pursued a policy of appeasement. So this three this three roles is your standard strategy to answering a reliability question, if you were to say, yes, I can trust. What if you wanted to go with a cannot trust strategy? What if you were to go with a cannot trust strategy? First of all, first of all, first of all, when you say cannot trust, you start by saying that the what the cartoon says, what the source says is one-sided. So here's the difference. Let me try to find a good background color for this. Okay, maybe green. Here's the difference. Whereas when, it, when you say it can trust, it's reasonable. When, when you go for cannot trust, it is one-sided. So make sure that you establish that the cartoon, the source is one-sided. That's why you cannot trust or a cartoon. That's why it's not reliable. Um, the inference remains the same. Britain made great efforts. Yes, Britain tried to prevent the world from falling to war, etc., etc. Et the evidence is the same. And then when we go to the cross-reference, you cannot trust the cartoon because what it says, you no longer say it's supported. You instead would say it is, um, recall from page one, it is contradicted, contradicted, right? Only when your knowledge goes against, opposes, um, and challenges what the source says, you don't trust it. That's very natural. So, so this is the case if you instinctively look at the cartoon about the great efforts of Britain, you say, well, that's, that's false. That's a lie. So why would you say that's false? Based on your contextual knowledge, Britain and France, mm, how would we say that, that, that they, they, they did make great efforts? to maintain peace did not deter Hitler 
from his aggressive and expansionist policies, which broke the Treaty of Versailles and threatened peace. Their actions encouraged Hitler and even and the failed appeasement policy eventually caused World War II to break out by 1939. So if you were someone who 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 was dismissive of the British and French approach to policy in 19, the 1930s, you, you might say that you don't trust the cartoon because you would say that the idea that Britain and France made great efforts to maintain peace is laughable because in fact, all they did was just surrender surrender other countries bit by bit. We could even write, let's write that. Britain and France kept surrendering other countries uh, lands without really stopping Hitler. I think this would be a pretty good, pretty solid set of contextual knowledge details that would demonstrate why you disagree with or why you think that the cartoon cannot be trusted. And so, and so what are the steps when we do a reliability question? Um, so first of all, before I carry on, you don't have to write both can trust and cannot trust. You don't have to write both sides. In this example on the worksheet, I gave you um, both sides of the answer because I want to establish how you would write either side. In an actual question, you only choose one side to write. You choose the side that you believe in. And so the steps to answering reliability um, right it's here first you ATQ then you establish the inference and then you do a cross reference but when you think about reliability or uh, I want you to notice that the ATQ comes last. ATQ comes last. This is going to be a bit tricky, so I'm going to tell you what, how it works. First of all, we do the inference plus explanation plus evidence. Then we look at the cross-reference. Support or contradict. If you wanted to go with a support cross-reference, then you go for ATQ and trust. If you went for contradict cross-reference, you go for ATQ, cannot trust. So your ATQ will come last in the thinking, in the thinking, but in the writing, in the writing, it comes first. That's the first thing I want you to know. Um, okay, the second thing, and you should, you can take this down on a post-it just so that you realize that when you think about the question, it's a bit different from when you answer the question. The second thing, the second thing is um, the ex evaluate provenance step. The evaluate provenance step in this case is the same. If you were to look at your worksheet, the evaluate pro provenance answer is the same. The highest level will always be, always be one side. You choose one side for the highest level. So if you started with can trust, but you end up with cannot trust for highest level, you just switch your stand and say, however, you cannot trust. If you already started with cannot trust, you can continue with furthermore, I, I do not cannot trust. And how you do the highest level, you look at the provenance. It's a British newspaper. You look at the time period in the 1930s. What does the newspaper want? The newspaper wants to pander to the public opinion of the British. The British at this time don't want a war. So the newspaper, of course, would have justified, supported, agreed with, and promoted the British appeasement policy and glorified Britain's efforts. Uh, so of course, the newspaper would publish a cartoon that shows Neville Chamberlain as the hero, Britain as the hero, Britain as saving the world from, from the Czech crisis and from war. This is something you expect from 
a, a British newspaper in the 1930s. Uh, because it has this agenda of glorifying, of promoting, of supporting the British policies. Uh, it's got a hidden agenda. It's, what it's saying is it's based on its own purpose and you don't trust it. That is the highest level for this, un- for this question. And so it would be the same whether or not you go with can trust or cannot trust in the cross-reference. Okay. What you should do now, you should write out one of the two answers in full. So you should write this whole thing on full scale. Actually, I suggest you write both paragraphs on full scale, both the can trust and the cannot trust. Why? Because by writing it out fully, you would have a, a much clearer sense of how to answer a question on reliability. Uh, if you want to do a bit more, you could also copy out the explain provenance paragraph to, fi- to see how we establish the provenance as the highest level answer. Uh, but I suggest, I suggest that most of you should go with the cross-reference. So again, the three steps, ATQ. And then you go for inference plus evidence. And then you go for cross-reference. Similarly, ATQ. Inference plus evidence. Cross-reference. If you... Okay, so please copy these two on full scale and then proceed to finish the rest of the questions on full scale as well. Uh, for the rest of the questions, you only need to write one side. You don't need to write both sides. If you have any trouble thinking of how to craft a reliability answer, it might suggest you don't have enough knowledge. So you want to go back to the textbook to gather your contextual knowledge about the matter and see whether the knowledge you have of the event, does it support or does it contradict what the source says? And that is how you craft a reliability answer. Okay, with that, I've come to the end, end of my my lesson on reliability. Um, so have a, have a good have a good day and see you next time.